Barnes from the Bruce Company is here answering your plant and garden questions. 270-9933. Good to see you. Good to Brought see you. Brought some Mark. color in for the inside of the house since everything's going to be white outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about the snow yet, but yes, I did bring some nice flowering plants. And if you have bulbs at home and don't have them in the ground, I would recommend you try to get that in as soon as possible because you st certainly can still plant them. And there isn't a good way to do unless you were to force them inside. And that means you have to put them, put them in pots and soil inside and then put them in a refrigeration type thing or sometimes people put it in a cooler in their garage but it's just simpler to put it in, put the, them ground. in the ground and this phalaenopsis um, uh, orchid that was just on the great big um, tall purple one that is an orchid that's quite easy to grow flowers for a long time last long long time oh, in yeah, months mm -hmm. yeah. very quick and easy to easy to grow that's a big one that's a very tall one. <laughs> All right, let's go to the flower. Let's go to the phones. We'll start with Kathy from Madison. Hi, Kathy. Hi. I planted three different varieties of catmint this year, and I can't find a definitive answer as to whether I should cut it back right now or just leave them the way they are. Catmint? Mm -hmm. Oh, catmint. Okay, catmint, that is a very versatile hardy um, perennial and a lot of times if foliage looks nice like um, on coral bells and jack frost um, I, I leave them and don't prune them back because if we have a mild winter they will just stay green but catmint I, I think you're gonna get too much flopping so I would suggest that you just prune that back a lot of them a lot of times they have a little rosette at the base and that part of the foliage you leave so just the taller portion you would cut back and leave the rosette that's at the very base okay Let's go to Ruth in Monroe. Hi, Ruth. Hello. Hi, what's your question? Um, last summer, I had trouble with Japanese beetles. And I know that they overwinter in the soil. And I was wondering if there's anything that I can do to keep them from hatching in the spring. Okay. Well, I, I, this is too late for you to be putting down material on the, on the grassy areas where they overwinter. They, they're probably they're moving down, especially with this, these colder temperatures. It's gonna, they're going to move down faster, and I'm not positive about the timing on that. Let me see if in early spring. I think it takes too long. I think that you're going to be actually they're going to be emerging, and then you would do a, a spray control at that time. But if there's a material you can put down in spring, I will talk about that next Monday. Okay, we'll go to Patricia now in Beaver Dam. Hi, Patricia. Hi. Hi. Which question? Um, <laughs> I have um, a honeysuckle vine I bought this year, and um, it it when I bought it, it had mildew on it, and I have done everything I could to, to spray, and, and I get rid of it, but then it seems to come back. Should I cut that back this fall? Well, if it's a new plant, I'd hesitate to do that, especially in the fall. The um, fact that it had powdery mildew on those leaves, if, if those, when they get infected enough, they generally fall, and then you can just clean them up. What I would suggest is next spring do a, a preventive application, because once you have mildew on leaves, you're not going to eradicate it. Okay. Do, treat it in the spring. Yes, preventively. No, don't, don't cut it back. Right. All right, Chris from Madison. Hi, Chris. Hi. Hi. I have a Dracaena houseplant. It's a uh, tree-like one that has three stalks coming up. And it's getting like little new little growths in the middle of the stem. Okay. And then the big leaves on top are like dying off. So I don't know why it's getting the new little growth in the middle. No, that's unusual. Usually the, the top portion when it's growing and it's healthy, it maintains a dominance that then you don't have those adventitious buds that will start lower down. If the leaves start to look poor near the top, you can actually prune them back to those the, the lower section and then that becomes the main main plant but it depends on what that if the top looks nice don't cut it off okay go to Jane in Waterloo hi Jane yes I have a question on a, the tree peonies mm -hmm. and do we treat those the same way as the regular peony bush no, no, definitely not. Tree peonies are, are, have woody stems, and the, besides being a lot more expensive than other peonies, you do not prune those down to the ground. You, we, that, you get a larger shrub. It doesn't get a whole lot taller, but you'll develop more branches. So let those all um, sit because the buds for next year are on those woody stems. Okay. All right, let's go to Char in Mount Horeb. Hi, Char. Hi. Hi, which question? I have a question on an orchid I got in May mm -hmm. um, for Mother's Day. It bloomed beautifully, and then the blooms died, and I know that they're supposed to go dormant for a while. What? However, one of the, I cut it back to where the nubs were, and then one of the stalks eventually turned brown, and it died. Mm -hmm. 
and then I kept, you know, I put the three ice cubes in it. It's that's how I'm supposed to be watering it. But then the second stalk died. And so I cut that back. I still have the big green leaves. They're mm -hmm. beautiful, but I'm wondering uh, if Chara, they will come back. Uh, Chara, I'm going to have okay. to put you on hold here. We're, we're out of time. Okay. The, okay. the leaves are all that she needs to grow. Keep watering it and fertilizing it. It may okay. be slower. Chara's waiting for you online, too. You can talk to her later. Okay. All right.